Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nick and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be uh, jumping back onto RS 715 on the Series PLC and we're going to be uh, checking out a uh, Siemens uh, uh, analog card. This particular analog card that we've got in here, it is a, I would say, a dead top of the range card. This one comes with 8 channels and pretty much can do all the, all the signals that you can imagine. Obviously there's obviously cards with different, uh, different more complicated signals, but for general signals this card as you covered, it can process volts, milliamps, uh, RTD, TC, tempo couples, resistors, and I think there was something else if I'm not forgetting, but yeah. Card is fully packed with all you're going to need. It's got eight channels, it's got fantastic options for diagnostics. We're gonna briefly go through them. So if you do struggle to fall find them and things like that, so it's gonna we're gonna have a quick look at it, how to look uh, what to look out for once you connect to the uh, to your S7. Uh, no, that's, uh, I mean S7. Yeah, portal to quickly have a look at it, what's been uh, 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 activating and what's not. And also, most importantly, we're gonna have a look at the wiring. And the one we're gonna be looking at today, we're gonna be using four wire sensor, the one we did set up in the last video. If you missed out the last video, do check out where we set up our six sensor distance uh, ultrasonic sensor. And uh, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be a, uh, uh, trying to uh, measure uh, the level of water uh, that is uh, we're going to be filling up our, in our bucket uh, so we can uh, put that signal into a PLC and in a couple of, in the next video most likely add it onto a HMI screen to see to uh, to not to see but to be able to monitor the level on our HMI screen as the level changes so yeah that's what we'll do today so without further ado let's get started <music> So first up, what we're gonna have a look at it is the actual uh, face of it as well. We've got a, a power light and a diagnostics light in here. So is some form of those diagnostic light in here, the C part in it. We're gonna look at those uh, possibly in the future, but not for today. And also another diagnostic light in here, which is a P, uh, which is very much a diagnosis if there's a power to the card or not. So that's pretty much that. And then you have a zero to eight channel, which is zero to, zero to seven, which means uh, Eight channels. So if you pull off the lid, in the lid you can uh, Siemens has been kind enough to sort of uh, uh, illustrate how each uh, particular uh, sensor you would wire. And when it comes down to milliamps, as you can see, milliamps. That, that this is for the two wire. That's how you wire the two wire. Obviously, there is a manual which I leave in the description below for you guys to look at all the necessary wiring that you're looking for. As you can see, that's that's for my four wire. As you can see, my sensor is receiving its own power and it's outputting plus and a minus to a card, and so the wiring would be a uh, eight and six, or in this case would be a uh, two and a four. So, and also you have uh, resistors and thermocouples and things like that. So it sort of more or less illustrates to you uh, how each thing uh, can be wired briefly on a lid, like they always do. Another thing is you can see down here, you got 42, and then 41, 42, 43, and 44. 41, 42 is your L, and 43 and 44 is M. So that means that you do need to have power, provide power to this card uh, uh, separately, and as you can see, I have done it in here already. The wiring, so my gray, my uh, my red one, as you know from my other videos, is my uh, plus, and my white ones is my minuses. So, and when it comes down to wiring, as you can see in here, my sensor, as you can see, uh, my sensor, uh, this is this this black cable, this black cable in here, that is uh, the returning signal from a sensor, which I've already explained the sensor in the last video. This is the analog sig uh, analog cable and uh, coming from the sensor that's going in my terminal two in here, which as you as you just remember, as I explained, we are wiring this scenario in there. So uh, obviously, I'm, I'm, uh, as you can see these pictures in here, that doesn't mean just, just, just for those channels. It just illustrates all the options for all the channels. So I'm basically, I'm using two and a four. So my plus will come in a two. That will be my uh, plus from the sensor. And as you can see, my negative, as it's a negative, the four, that's coming straight actually from my uh, uh, from my main power supply. It's uh, power supply itself, not from actual sensor, because my sensor is uh, receiving. So so that the negative must come from the negative the sensor is receiving. It doesn't matter where it's coming from, as long as it's the same negative the sensor is receiving. So that will be our fourth in there. So the white cable, it's our main uh, circuits, circuits and negative. So on that, how you would wire in the four wire sensor. And obviously do follow the specific uh, instructions in here, how to do that. Because the key is for you guys to understand is to 
make sure you know what sensors you're dealing with because as you can see setups are different and that will, be, that will include the setups inside the uh, TI portal that we are going to look at right now so uh, do make sure you understand those sensors that you have we already started the sensor channel we'll be checking out more and more in the future but it is it's, it's just uh, make sure when you start testing or full find anything, understand what sensors are you working with. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much all there is needed to be to understand from the wiring. As you can see, it's still got the man in here. That's for the for the, for the, for the common grounding if it's required. So it's not necessary, if it's, but if you wish to. It's, it's optional if you wish to use it and you do need to use it. So do use it. So and that are a uh, four, uh, four wire uh, sensors being wired in to input 4 to 20 milliamps. That's having, having done that, so let's move on to the laptop. So now we need to configure the channel itself. So to go and configure your channel itself, this is going to be a continuation from previous videos we already have done. So this setup is already, we, we've done it in a previous videos. If you want to know how we got to this point, do check out the previous videos. So I already, as you can see, marked up my first channel, which is a zero channel in here. So uh, you can click on here and it will take you straight to it for general purposes and uh sort of uh it gives you gives you understanding what channel is an address and things like that but what we're gonna do we're gonna go straight into the card itself because we need to set it uh, set, set it up itself so uh, and as you can see in here there's uh, there's quite a bit you can do there's uh protection uh, project information catalog information identification maintenance and all other bits and pieces that you can do then you can do a uh, module uh, parameters when you go into the channel templates as you can see you can set up the channel template in here uh, so so all that will be as, as long as you will use template all the chat all the channels there will be configured the same so you can this is where you can configure your own template so we're not going to do that because our channel is going to be different so and then uh so no, we're not going to get into that one that we don't really need that one at the moment so and then let's uh go into no more configurations and this is where you can do a bit more uh, selective if you wish to so now we so uh, remember when i was talking about diagnostics we're going to get to in a minute but you can see all these diagnostics available We've got a, as long as it is in manual, when you're selected in manual, your channel will be configurable manually. If it's template, it will be used in template. As you can see, it, 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 it sort of grays them out, saying that you can't do it because you're using the template that you already preset it previously. So, as you can see, zero channel is in the manual, and we're not using any of the diagnostics. We got a no supply, overflow, underflow, common mode errors reference junction, uh, wire break, and current limit for the wire break diagnostic. There's all these things uh, will be available from different types of sensors. We're not going to be using any of them, but when you do the fault finding, do check out what is being selected as well. If you have got a HMR that displaying you the um, uh, what errors you are getting. Sometimes sometimes people don't put the program in the bin. They select them, but they don't put the program in, so they don't pop up just like that on your screen. So you're probably gonna need to connect to your laptop. The best way to diagnose anything, just collect, uh, connect your uh, uh, laptop to your system, get into a project and have a look at what's going on. So that's the best and fastest way to do it, at least for me. And we got the diagnostics in there. That's that's, uh, that's what we just looked at. Input parameters, you can select uh, set them all in here. So, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna go straight to general interface input in here and zero. So as you can see in here, I selected manual. Because we're doing everything in manual, so this the setup our uh, channel again. Hopefully, you understand already so far how this all works. And in here, you can uh, uh, select all your uh, diagnostics uh, process if you want to do it. All the diagnostic options in here. We're not going to do any of those, but we, um, hopefully, by uh, you already know what they are. Because any of this is selected, and any of these occur, the, the diagnostics light will be flashing red and telling you what is what. So, and down here, you need to select what you're measuring. That's the key key aspect of what you are measuring. So as you can see, here is a lot. So first you go into group. So what sort of group you're gonna be select. So if we, we're gonna be, as you can see, four wire transducer. This is our sick sensor. Channel can be deactivated. It can be a uh, resistors, all different types. You get four, three, two wire, then a thermal resistors, four, three, two wire, and thermal couples. So for us, for this video, we'll be checking out the for thermal couples and other bits in the future videos, because we got some cool project that I'm gonna be working on is to do with uh, boiling a cup of, cup of coffee with our PID. So that's for the future. So we are going to be in a four, uh, to four wire transducer, which I already explained in the last video, how that would be, uh, how that would work. 
So, and in here you have to select what milliampage, milliamps you want. So it's 0 to 20, 4 to 20, or uh, 20 milliamps. If you are working and requ you require the uh, under limit uh, to be detected, so you will definitely be using most common for that, is a 42 milliamp, because if there is a wire breakage, it will detect that there is zero, and that will indicate errors for you. So uh, everything else at the moment, we are going to leave it as is. And that's it, that's pretty much our channel is, for the basic purposes, is all set up. We're not gonna go too deep in all other stuff, because those are most likely gonna come up in the future when we're gonna progress in more complex projects. So for now, that will do. So all what we're gonna do in here, as you can see, I already pre-done that. I created like a little move instruction in here. So we are basically taking, oh, let's go, taking the IW4, which is if you go in a configuration in here, if you go in here and you go into I tags, as you can see, all the channels are right here. So you can name them as you wish. So IW4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. All channels are here, you can name them up if you wish to. And obviously there's other, other ways you can do it, but this is, I find, easiest way to name them up. So once you tag them up, it's quite simple. So uh, you go in here and, and uh, do your split screen and just drag or, you know, I'm hoping pretty much you know how to do this. We're just moving data from here into memory word zero. And that is it. Our channel is ready for testing. So uh, let's go into the, let's select this our CPU and pump the whole thing in. So hopefully it all goes well. We there we go. So oh, that's that went quick. So that's it. So all the information is in. So uh, next up, let's uh, what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our liter of water. Well, actually two liters of water, and see how the signal changes. So remember that bucket that we had from the previous video. That's pretty much that's the bucket from the previous video, and there is our two liter water that we are gonna be displaying in the next videos. HMI we're gonna be setting up. So uh, let's uh, swap the cameras around. So let's go put this one into a uh, watch thingy. So as you can see, at the moment it shows roughly about 26,000 because uh, at the moment the setup is a uh, maximum is 27,000. So it's pretty much seeing the bottom down there. Could be configured a bit better, but that will do. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start pouring water into it and you should be able to see the level changing. So is the digits. So remember, this is not scaled in any way. So uh, it is just using is our uh, generic input. So as you can see, as we fill in the uh, digit changes, water level is rising, and our uh, pretty much we are able now to monitor exactly where water is. So while we fill this bucket up, it should go. If I just configure my sensor correctly. That's why I understand. That's why I say, guys, it is crucial for you to configure your sensor correctly. Yeah, did I do the right? Yeah, almost, almost, almost done. There we go. So the water stopped moving, and yeah, we are around. It would indicate on our. Uh, so we're gonna uh, in, a, in the next video we can quickly have a look at the bit of smoothing this out because the sensor can do that, and so is the system. It can do that. So actually, one second, we're gonna quickly have a look at how to smooth this out. Actually guys for that we're going to be looking into that some other video So that will do for today So hopefully it helps you out and gives you a good understanding how this uh, card works and how to get yourself uh, Going so uh, in the next video we're going to be checking out we're going to be we're going to be checking out other signals Obviously the card has got other signals We have looking at how to set them up and how to get them going so to tune in if you want to see So uh, so yeah, and that uh, hopefully I have a uh, past the message on uh, okay, so you can understand what is what. So, and yeah, I'll see you next video. Thank you very much for watching.